Well, Keith, you you talked about gold. Ryan, what do you think about eyes? What's your thing? <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> August 25th. When the eyes are gold, you got three numbers, Ryan. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my. This <laughs> okay, is gold brutal. Okay, Golden 007. <laughs> Okay, one of the best I, games. 007, one of the greatest games for its time. This was a game that I played a lot at friends' house. It was the FPS party game basically until Halo came out, I think. Uh for consoles, I should say. I played this a ton with friends doing the multiplayer and then eventually i think i got mine like 98 99 i finally got my own copy of it i probably didn't get it till like two years later but i remember it won like game of the year like two years in a row even it was like the <laughs> games that came out the following year were just not good enough and ga- it, it gold and i won again they were just like this game's still better than those games um uh, yeah this you know, you think movie games generally they they had a bad history, but this was just a banger, and it was with N sixty four having four controller ports. The multiplayer was just the best multiplayer for a console first person shooter. And then not only that, but the campaign mode was actually really fun to play too, and was the levels were really interesting, and you had all these objectives and. It just was a recipe for an incredible game that just kind of came out of nowhere and people loved. Mm -hmm. GoldenEye was my first experience playing the the N64 at a friend's house, playing the multiplayer, and it's just incredible how good this game is. Like Ryan said, every area of it is just like top of the line for its time the campaign was amazing they managed to fit the story of goldeneye uh, 007 into this game in a fun way with the different mission objectives and the replayability of single player by adding on objectives as you increase difficulties like that was a very cool thing that the game did and then the multiplayer not just having a arena for people to um, shoot each other with they had all these different modes and options in it that you could play all of these different like you could play with the same people and have 20 different games depending on the options that you choose like if you did proximity mines only or slappers only or if somebody was winning too much you could make them choose jaws and then they were an easier target like there was just so many options in golden eye i i would get why it would win game of the year two years in a row because it really is one of the the best games i would say not even of its time but of all time absolutely and i think what's what's interesting is let's look at what we talked about you know within these 10 months or so so when it comes to first person shooters you know keith you played hexen that came out less than three months before this one so yeah. just think about the technical difference right like we're not saying which oh, game is insane. better or not because Hexen but, wow. is kind of a rehash of a formula that already existed. But with Goldeneye, it was just such a step above. Like, if you, graphics aside, if you took something like Doom 64, if you took something like Hexen, you could pretty much do the same thing in Doom, right? Like, it wasn't exactly um, lighting the world on fire with what it was doing, as good as it was. But when you look at something like Goldeneye versus what they were doing, like, this was an entire reinvention of the first-person genre. Not only was it a good game, but it was, like, a game that moved things forward. And I think it was very similar to Mario because, okay, Turok. Turok was 3D, great game. People still play it. But Turok, I feel like a lot of people love it for its jank. Like Mm -hmm. you could tell it was still, okay, it's a first-person shooter, but it's kind of empty. It works. But then GoldenEye said, okay, no, this is a cinematic first-person shooter experience on the N64. Like on the previous episode, I talked about one of my favorite things with uh, Super Mario 64 was not even progressing through the game. It was understanding the the feel of the character. When I played GoldenEye, the thing that really stuck out to me was how 
the character had weight. Like in Turok and other first-person shooters, I felt like the character, you're just a floating weapon. But with Goldeneye, like the walking, everything about it from and when you how got you shot moved. and you went, <sighs> and the blood, it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's the details. <laughs> yeah. It was so freaking good. It was so freaking good. And, and um, what did you guys think about that? Because Goldeneye, to me, really was the first cinematic game. And I'm not just saying because it's literally based off a movie. I mean, how many games we've seen based off a movie that they strip out the cinematic part yet here, it's like the cutscenes were were very uncommon still. Like at this point, a really good 3D cutscene, and you know, it's not like full of dialogue, but when you look at the dam, right? And James Bond is about to jump down. I remember just like being, wow, this is amazing. Like I'm seeing him. And it's like maybe what? A 10 second cutscene or something, a clip, but it makes you feel like you are playing James Bond as opposed to here's a generic character. Did that mean anything to you guys? I wonder if one of the reasons, because they they had to do the cutscenes, right? Because N64 wasn't good with having like videos in it, like the PlayStation. You couldn't have like full motion video in it. So Probably. they had to do the cutscenes. But it yeah, the cutscenes definitely helped. And they, they did a good job of actually following the events of the movie really, really well. So then that was... So much so that I actually wanted to, I went and like rented the movie because I, w- I played the game before I even saw the movie. And the, even more fun with that was because of all the cheats that they added, you could have like big head mode in and then see all the cutscenes with James Bond having just <laughs> yep. like a massive head. And I remember, I think he just like couldn't even like grip the helicopter right in that final cutscene because of the big <laughs> head. Like it was just, the f- it just had a great combination of good single player great multiplayer, and then just all these little bells and whistles to just make it even more fun. And I think the other thing we got to talk about is this came out August 25th, 1997. Do you guys remember the year the uh, film came out? I have no idea. <laughs> 95. 95. So the film, yeah. mm-hmm. it, it wasn't like a, like the, like it like came out six months ago. Right, with the release, yeah. So we're, so so just imagine that. It's like you had to sell people on, okay, we got to make at least a halfway mediocre game based on a movie that came out over a freaking year ago from a genre, like the first person genre, with the exception of like, look, you don't have a reference here. You have like, what, three games that have come out. So much like the the speculation that we had on the previous episode of like what we have gotten Donkey Kong Country 3 had the N64 not been delayed here it's like could you imagine if they had just said uh Keith like the movie already came out let's just scrap the project and something that was fascinating to me about this game I actually saw a lot of documentaries most of the developers from this game this was their first game that they had been working on like a lot of them didn't understand it's like oh, of course this is how you would make a game. So it laid the foundation for a lot of companies to say like, maybe we do need some people with an outsider's perspective because they saw the movie and they're like, well, we got to make the movie like the game. So we just got to make it happen. And we got one of the best games of all time, right? Yeah, it's fascinating how just that unique perspective, like how I was talking about earlier, where it was somebody that, or it was a game that kind of pushed the industry forward, at least the first person genre part of the industry. Like, I bet you a lot of that can be attributed to the fact that it was a lot of these developers' first games and not really... um, being accustomed to making the norm to really like following that doom formula. So it, it's cool to know that and how I'm um, like, talk about starting the show with a showstopper, right? Like if golden eye is your first game, what do you do from there? <laughs> well, good thing it's rare and they just kept putting out bangers. <laughs> rare. Man, just oh, rare. So freaking I miss good. the yeah, I old guess you rare. go to pinata islands. That's where you go next. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, did you guys hear about the whole process? Like there was a, I think it was for 360. It's been like fully dumped. Like there was a, a full on remaster that was made, but never released. And oh, they yeah. found the code and a, it's like fully playable. 
there was a time in the mid 2000s where it kept popping up like there was a time where it was going to end up on xbox live arcade yeah, and then yeah. it was going to be on the virtual console and then the rare replay like that game just was supposed to be everywhere and just and for it was whatever just last reason. year and there was also we made like goldeneye rogue agent like the on nintendo we they were trying to like capitalize on mm-hmm. the nostalgia of goldeneye just didn't hit the same hey we really hope you enjoyed this podcast clip and if you did guess what you can listen to the full episode right now by searching for quest rewind on your favorite podcast app including spotify and while you're at it follow us over there so you never miss a new episode